Hey everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And wow, this has been really a big day because there is uh, breaking news that I can't wait to tell you about. But first, we will look at this Forbes article. This is an article that highlights some of the projects out there that are beating Bitcoin in terms of gains. And XRP is among one of them. So whether you compare the last 24 hours, the last seven days, the last 30 days, or the one year, XRP is outperforming Bitcoin. It's up 172% while Bitcoin is up 158%. Now I know it's not the only project out there that is doing so well. We have Ethereum up 300%, Chainlink up 558%, ADA up 310%, Stellar up 213%, Zilliqa up 445% and wow, Ocean, oh my gosh, up four digits. So this end of 2020 is turning out to be a very green year. I think it's so excited, exciting when we have price action like this. So in this particular video, yes, I'm going to move fast. I'm going to bring you to multiple levels where we are going and also where we have been and where we are now. So whether you are new in this space or you are an OG, I'm going to unpack a few things that I think are important for you to know. And with the solid gains that XRP is having, there's lots of articles, lots of articles that look like this with headlines, intellectual capital firm calls XRP one of the most intriguing assets in crypto. Yeah, it's the price action. It has people stopping and taking pause, as it should. For those of you who are really paying attention, though, on a daily basis, you know that Signum, which is a Swiss Singapore bank, is one of those banks to really pay attention to. And in October, they teamed up with not only their synergy, but also with some money in a fund to drive the digital asset opportunities into the new year with SBI. SBI, of course, is the largest shareholder, the outside shareholder of Ripple. And I can tell you that the two of them together are going to be very dangerous in a very good way. So this is the head of the asset management at Signum. I want you to listen to what he says. Remember, this is a bank and they are making recommendations as to what projects to invest in in this space. Now, when going for the core, we propose to take direct exposure in the key protocols which are already out there, namely Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. Together, those three tokens represent more than 70% of the market capitalization of tokens. And in addition to that, they represent totally different use cases. Bitcoin is more perceived as a store of value. Ethereum provides the platform and the infrastructure upon which future applications can be built and xrp is a payment platform so even with investing into just those three tokens you have a significant exposure to a broad set of cryptocurrencies so i know they're just highlighting the one use case for xrp which is being used as a bridge currency for the payment payments platforms but you know what really really there are a lot of other use cases and I'm going to touch on a few of those. And yes, you should pay attention and I will tell you why. But first, breaking news. This is Novati. Novati has just become a major Ripple partner. They will now be able to gain access to their network. And in the release, they mention XRP twice. It is specifically talking about how XRP is leveraged to move money. And in the Sentiment AU, I found that this company processes 2.3 billion in transactions annually. And just for interest, they were one of the 175 companies that were listed in attendance to the annual Ripple Swell event in 2019. So the partnership to start will initially target transactions between Australia and Southeast Asia with plans underway to expand. Now, let me remind you that on-demand liquidity that uses the digital asset XRP and frees up capital is live in Australia. 
And from that release, I want to read to you this right here. So it says, in particular, we, meaning Novati, we look forward to working with Ripple to provide our customers with access to the exciting alternative financing solutions so that our customers can free up capital to focus on growing their business. What in the world are they talking about? I'm sure it's the new financing solution that Ripple has in their XRP lending solution called the line of credit. If I take you to that website, you can see here that it is all about freeing up capital. So send now, pay later. XRP is loaned to the RippleNet members and then they can use that freed up capital to grow their business. You also have to remember that if they use XRP, it eliminates capital from being tied up in the swift, archaic model that uses the correspondent banking model with those Nostro Vostro accounts. So quite frankly, I know that many of you don't care about the details of the use cases, but you should. You really should care beyond just price. And the reason why is I want to tell you softly but sternly, it's important because the utility is what is going to drive the price. And as Raoul Paul figured out in his nearly one hour educational video that was with the amazing Santiago Velez, he got it. Yes, Raul got it. And I want you to listen to that portion. This video is amazing, by the way, but I'm gonna just play for you at the end, after Santiago has spent a little bit of time, he gets the use case is going to drive the price of XRP. And the negativity, uh, more and more people are, are using it that just by evidence of, of the volumes. Take a look at the volume, John. It's kind of out of the, the kind of crypto speculative radar screen, and it's really what it is, is becoming a utility, and it's and it will derive its value from its utility function. I, the more people who are using it, the more it's likely to go up, as opposed to Bitcoin, which is not being used in any other way specifically, or not many other ways specifically, as opposed to store of value, which seems to be its use case. So that is seemingly now the use case of Bitcoin, that it is just a store of value. It's not being used, but the more that XRP is used, the more likely it will affect the price. Absolutely. So Santiago did a great job. He explained also how Coil and Cinnamon can stream those, those payments. And you know, the ledger is really something that is quite special. It hit a milestone on December 4th. It closed uh, 60 million ledgers and it coincided with its eighth year anniversary because the ledger came into existence in December, 2012. And one of the people who has been looking after that ledger I mean, Nick is looking after the ledger. So many people are looking after the ledger, but David has been looking after it for quite some time. He is the CTO at Ripple, David Schwartz. And this little fun fact was put out there on the 5th of December. I like these, I hope they continue them. And it is where David Schwartz, Ripple's CTO, actively contributes to Bitcoin's code base and his first commit was July 25th, 2011. Yeah, I think he was bounty hunting for bugs at that time, if my memory serves me right. Now, this is a use case that I can point out to you that the co-creator of the DeFi tokenization platform chose the XRP ledger to build on because he says in this video that was uploaded on November 23rd that it's decentralized. Yes, it is. It's secure. Yes, it is, and it's blazingly fast. And another, another project out there that's being built on the XRP ledger is Spend the Bits. They chose the ledger for some of the same reasons 
but also because it is eco-friendly. And you can also earn XRP as interest on your BTC balance. Point being, and this is a big point, hundreds upon hundreds of projects are going to be built on the XRP ledger. And each one of those projects will likely open the door, like this use case, to use the digital asset XRP in their solution. That is why you want to pay attention because this part of the big picture of XRP is so important. And we can't forget the SUM wallet by XRPL Labs, who is supporting the Flare Network Spark Token airdrop. And this is going to allow people like you who are watching this video to participate in making those smart contracts work. You can participate in the use case, which is going to drive more liquidity. There, I got Momo. She's always pushing on my, on the back of my computer. So I know that a few of the YouTubers were on the fence, which put a lot of people on the fence of whether they were going to participate or not. And I think it's just clearly they didn't understand how big this really is. Weetzi understood right away, and he has been working tirelessly answering questions in all places. <laughs> but someone even showed up at his door. Not cool. <laughs> Not good. Because please do your own research. Don't knock on people's doors. That research can be done on the flare dot XYZ. There is all the information you need to know about this project. And at Stetis on Twitter, he's been doing a very timely, fabulous job to keep us updated. And his card really recently shows us how big this use case has become. 81,000 plus accounts are set up to claim the Spark token, 17.5 billion XRP in value. And we have Coinbase, Binance, Bitthumb, along with 12 exchanges in Japan in one big swoop that are officially supporting this airdrop. This is not a get rich quick scheme, okay? This is all about you participating in the ecosystem. Please don't forget those words because I foresee a lot of people starting to complain that they can't get rich on the Spark token. That is not what this is about. I want to update you a little bit on my YouTube channel. I had some communication from YouTube yesterday, and it's starting to look promising. I'm not saying I'm out of the woods yet, but I might be on track soon. And having gone through this with my channel, it's taught me uh, a few valuable lessons, one of which uh, pushed me to do live streams, which was not a space I was comfortable to do, but it was very learning and I will continue once in a while. And yeah, after you do them, you're really on kind of this energy rush. I like it. And I also concentrated more on my Patreon, which is a place that I found I feel very comfortable to do more speculation and i like to cover other projects that are impacting this space one of which is about signum bank that i'm working on because there's some interesting stuff going on in singapore singapore is really really progressive they're opening up their payments plumbing to non banks in february this is big very big. And then we have this Maxine Waters in the United States that's pulling the U.S. in the wrong direction, telling Biden to rescind the work that Brian Brooks has done from the OCC on crypto guidance. This is a woman who really treats others as if she was a shogun instead of a public servant. And you got to listen to this. I mean, if this is the woman who is pulling the United States in that direction, just have a listen. 
uh, we're going to talk with all of the experts out there who know a lot about cryptocurrency and can tell us about the history of Bitcoin. Uh, we're going to talk with all of the, the history of what there who know a lot about cryptocurrency and can tell us about the history of Bitcoin. <laughs> I can't even find the words when she says that. I mean, I can't find the words. So I had a quick couple of DMs with Ron Hammond on the 27th of November. He was previously with Ripple. He explains on his Twitter feed in very uh, good detail through a thread about this stable act, the bill that he is, uh, I think he's trying to educate those in, in DC. Yeah, he's fighting the good fight still. He's consulting now. And he says that the bill is not going to have enough time for a hearing or a floor vote, but will come back next year. I think if you follow Ron and reach out to him, he's very helpful. And if you want to know what's going on with regulation in D.C., and if he can tell you, I know he will because he is just really a good guy. It is at Ron W. Hammond is his uh, handle on Twitter. Okay, everybody, we're jumping to the bluff. So we have a new Ikea in Shibuya. Shibuya, of course, is my favorite part of Tokyo. And it's um it's gone up instead of out. It's seven stories high. Yeah, you have to do that in these urban areas. They still are able to feature 9,500 items, which is which is really, really good. If you spend more than 8,000 yen, which is about 75 US dollars, you can get one of these handled bags that have the Shibuya on it, which I'm really hoping that they still have uh, one. And I want to try one of the 10 veggie dogs that they have brought to the world for the first time. They're naming them after different cities in Sweden. They look yummy. I want to try. And you have to make a reservation before you go. I think you make a reservation online by 9 p.m. for the next day, and then they give you a time slot. I'm looking for a stand-up desk, and this is the one that I found that fits into a corner, which could work for me. I don't know if I'm big on the metal, but I will take a look at it when I go and shop there. And the last thing I wanna show you is, you may not know what you're looking at because these are something that possibly is unique to Japan. These are bath covers. And these kitties have found a perfect place to <laughs> relax. The bath covers are put on top of the tub to keep the water warm, which is one of the eco-friendly solutions here. And this person really knows how to relax in the bath, playing games with their phone off to the side and a little drink. Yeah. All right, everybody. Do take care and sayonara for now. Bye-bye.